<laughs> Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and today we have the second video of overclocking the Ryzen 5 2400G which is an APU from AMD What's more, I told you, I told you I would say this So guys, the second overclocking video, this time the extreme version So, 40 Hz on the CPU core, 15,000... 15,000... 1500 MHz on the GPU and 3200 MHz on the memory speed, DDR4 memory speed, so quite nice for this APU in this particular B350 Tomahawk, MSI B350 Tomahawk. And that's mostly it guys, we're gonna put this little guy, which in fact is there on that PC, uh, but anyway, this little guy, we will put it at 4 GHz and we'll push the GPU and we will push the DDR4 timings and sub-timings. So this is the more extreme version like I said before, but this little boy can do many many things and I'm, I'm proud of you son, I'm proud of you. So hit like, subscribe and share the video and let's now go to the part that you really want to see which are the settings on my BIOS. So once more I'll show you the settings and with comments, voice comments over it. Thanks a lot for watching and let's now go. So guys, here we are now. Let's go. Uh, we have the settings. Let's not go. We have the settings and we have the OC. Let's go first to the OC because you need to see my settings like always. So the, o the OC Explore mode, it usually is on the normal mode. So you have to put it on expert in order to overclock better. So on the CPU ratio, just put 14, 40 because that's it, that's what we're gonna do. 40, you can put it at 39 if 40 is not stable, but I'll be with 40 because it is stable for me. On the graphics frequency, I use 1500 MHz, you can use 1600 MHz, but at least for me, I had to put the CPU, the, the CPU sock voltage and the graphic voltage over 1.2 volts and I don't want that, I don't advise you. I advise you, at least I, adv I advise you to not go over 1.4, 1.2 volts, sorry, for daily usage. On the DRAM frequency, we now have 32,000, 3200, sorry, 3200 uh, megahertz on the RAM. I use Memory Triad, Memory Triad is very, very effective. Most guys don't, don't overclock and can't overclock over certain uh, speeds like 2666 megahertz why because of the sub timings and the memory triad will also change the sub timing so it will make it easier to overclock your ram so you can try the several settings and see if your ram boots if your if your pc boots if yes you can then see if it is stable or not on the timings i changed also the timings from 18 to 16 um, and I messed around with the sub timings as well, but if you want more stability just leave the sub timings alone and just mess with the timings a bit if you want. The sub timings, one more time, leave them alone because they will mess your overclock and your stability. So that's mostly it on the, the RAM part. Now on the voltages, CPU core voltage, I can have my 4 GHz at 1.3875 volts. It is stable this way, I tested it, I played with it, um, some games for example, and it is stable, but don't go over 1.4 volts. Every CPU is different, remember, and don't go over 1.4 volts, it has been said by AMD, don't go over 1.4 volts for daily usage. If you want to do some benchmarks, go for it, but for daily usage, I don't advise you to go over 1.4 volts. On the, CPUs, uh, on the CPU NB and SOC voltage, I, I at least have 1.15, I have 1.13 but the motherboard will put it and at 1.15 and well, it is stable for my graphic overclock at 1500 uh, megahertz. If I want to go above the, um, the, the 1500, sorry, I need to go to at least 1.2 volts on the SOC and that is not good. Don't go over 1.2 volts on SOC because you can fry your ship. On the RAM, I have 1.42 volts. I need to put it at 1.44 volts in order to for the mother, for the motherboard, sorry, to put it at 1.42, and that is stable. RAM, 
uh, RAM voltage is very very important in order to overclock um, in a good way. Um, so global C state disabled. We don't have uh, we don't want power saving features. We want performance. So no to the power saving features and the spread spectrum. Put it at disable for better overclocking. The rest on auto. Once more, sync the voltages. Sorry if I'm being like. A little a little annoying but I'm trying to explain the best I can uh, so sorry in advance uh, anyway once more showing the um, the voltage uh, the voltages sorry the um, the timings once more if you want to copy them I don't advise you to do it because all the RAMs are different um, now on the load line calibration this is very important also why simple because um, you want uh, this load line calibration will control the um, the load voltage so when you're playing a game or when you're benchmarking or or when you're doing some rendering this will control the load the voltage on load so mode 2 and mode 4 serve for the um, for your load voltage to be equal to the um, to the voltage you you have chosen on bias on this motherboard so if you chosen 1.38 when I play a game, the voltage will be 1.38 and won't go down, neither go higher. Now on the advanced and now uh, the, um, the integrated graphics configuration force the 2 gigabytes. The windows will select it automatically, but it is better to have pre-allocated 2 gigabytes of RAM. That's mostly it, let's now go see a bit uh, of gameplay of Crisis as well, for you to see the temps and the performance. So guys, that is it. Even on Crisis 3, as you may see, a very demanding game at 1080p, at low settings and medium textures, the game runs pretty okay, 30 around 30 FPS, some drops obviously on these on these parts because these parts are more heavy, um, usually around 30 FPS. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share the video if you can. Thanks a lot for watching and don't forget the temps are on stock cooler. See you in the next video.